Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the Curve ETF dividend announcements for all of the Curve Invest ETFs. Let's get it. So we're going to go over to the CurveInvest.com website. This is where you can find this information, CurveInvest.com. So we're going to take a look at the different ETFs. You guys can see here that they have six in total. Um, I believe NEOS also has the SPYI, but we're not talking about that one in this video because this is for stock-specific um, options, premiums, uh, dividend funds. So with that being said, we're going to take a look at all the different ETFs. There is six in total, so there's going to be six different dividends here, but um, you can see the Amazon one is currently 14%. And the dividend yield for this one was slightly higher on the month. So instead of 32 cents, you get 35 cents. Now, if we go over to AAPY, which is Apple, you get slightly higher yield, 15%. Again, remember, and we know the yield max ETFs are extremely high yielding compared to these, okay? But before the yield max ETFs or CLIP or any of that came out, this was considered to be high yield, okay? So it's still not a bad deal, in all honesty. So the Apple version um, would have made slightly less, but again, you know, something else we're going to take a look at also is the price appreciation. So um, with these on the surface, it appears you're not just getting the yield, but you're also getting some uh, upside potential as well. So that's always good. So this is the Google one, which is currently 12%. Um, not super high yielding, but you know, it's still better than some dividend paying stocks out there. So slight increase on the month, uh, 29 cents instead of 27 ish cents. We got Microsoft. This is MSFY with about a 12 and a quarter percent yield. And we scroll down here. You can see that it did pay slightly less, but again, um, this is 24 cents a month. So I believe, uh, I think Microsoft currently is paying like no, that, that's Apple, my bad. So I don't know what Microsoft is currently paying on a quarterly basis. I don't really keep up with it. But uh, basically, Microsoft stock pays every quarter. This one pays every month. So that's something to keep in mind. It came in lower, but you're still going to get $0.24 cents a month. So now we got Netflix and FLP. Um, both the Netflix and the Tesla one typically pays more, we've noticed. So we're keeping an eye on that. So you got 19% for Netflix. And the yield came in higher than last month. So you get about 45 cents on the month. And the last one being Tesla, of course, the most volatile TSLP with 25% yield. And this one has also paid more on the month than the previous month with about a nine cent increase. So that's pretty good. So as you guys notice here in the watch list, we pretty much only have the Netflix and the Tesla ones available here, but we're going to take a look at all of these. The reason why we only have these two is because they've been the highest yielding so far. Um, so this would be the first one. This is the Amazon one. So uh, you're not going to get a super high yield with it, but keep in mind you are getting paid options premiums and you're also still getting... I actually have to remeasure this. So you're still getting... As of right now, roughly about a 10% increase in your share prices as well. And keep in mind, this thing, since it came out, it literally has done nothing but gone up. So that's definitely a concern for the yield max investors. But for people that want the best of both worlds, this is a good, like a dividend growth option per, per se. So here we have AAPY. We're going to take a look at that one. Uh, this one, again, has pretty much done nothing but gone up. So you can see this barely noticeable red candle here. This was the open week. So as of basically the last nine weeks, this thing has gone up about 7%, so not bad. Uh, now we're going to go down to Google. So this would be Goop. And you guys can see that this one has really, really started taking off as of recently. You can see this breakout candle right here, right above that red candle close there with a close above the red candle. That's an, a bullish indication, just so you all know. So from the open to where it is currently, get about an 8.5% uh, price appreciation. So that's pretty good. 
Uh, we'll take a look at MSFY here. Okay, I don't know what this is. This may be on the Microsoft chart. This thing was actually um, getting rejected off the highs. You know what? I'm actually quite curious to see what this is. So I'm going to pull up the chart of Microsoft right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can have a look at this and see what's going on here. Okay, so it would appear that um, once this weekly candle got rejected here at the highs, you can see this little tiny wick on this green bar here. That was the major rejection on MSFY. And it dropped pretty substantially. And then we had this massive wick here on Microsoft. So that did actually, um, interestingly enough, that was the start of the downtrend on the MSFY. But regardless, if you had bought this thing, basically from the time of inception, you made so far unrealized roughly about 4%. So now moving on to, um, we have NFLP and TSLP. So NFLP. Actually going to close this window so we can take a look, a closer look at this. So NFP has had quite a yield, but it also it has not been as bullish as some of these others. So that could potentially be a buying opportunity because you see this red bar right here has not been closed down below yet. If this is resistance flipped into support. And again, later on, we'll take a look at the underlying, but uh, it could be moving up from here. So still roughly about 8% increase. So that's pretty good. And the NEO's Tesla version. So this one basically has been pretty much just straight up. I mean, if you had bought from here, you would have had like a little tiny dip, but then you ripped straight to the upside. So Tesla, the TSLP has obviously been the best performer. <clears throat> you would have got a 60 cent, 66 cent dividend and you also would have made about 15% in gains. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and again, in the future, we'll take a look at these ETFs versus the underlines uh, back to back. We'll take a close look at those and see how they correlate with one another or if they're correlating. That's definitely important to know, I would say, um, as both a trader and an investor. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.